Whiskey Jason here. Whiskey from the viewpoint of an American in Germany tasting rare and exotic whiskeys. And today I'm in Israel with Milk and Honey Distillery, m &H. And today I have their Sherry Cask Elements. Single malt whiskey, 46% alcohol by volume. Um, over here in Germany, I paid 55 euros for this, and this is whiskey base number 161054. All right, very, very good. So my information is here. Um, m &H is from very close to Tel Aviv in Israel, and they have um, produced a few different whiskeys so far. I've had the privilege of interviewing their global brand ambassador in Hamburg, Germany, at the beginning of um, 2020. It was very interesting to see what they're doing. I actually received a sample set with a promograde, um, with the sherry elements, with the normal one, and a, a white wine finish, and so on. So this is the classic um, from m &H, which I'm going to compare. And um, this is around 40-some euros here in Germany. This is, as I said, 55 euros for the sherry. Now, this is kosher. Now, kosher um, can mean many different things. And the Torah talks a little bit about kosher, but does, of course, not mention distilled spirits. Now, um, for the last 50 years or so, there's been a boom in something called kosher wines. Now, the whole thing of kosher is to make sure it doesn't get in contact with certain ele other elements that can make it unkosher, and that, of course, is guaranteed here. But when I did my research on the word kosher, I found out that it's more about who produces and distributes this wh whiskey rather than how. Um, and that was a very interesting fact. Um, so they said this is the first kosher um, sherry cask ever, and the question is, of course, well, why? Hmm. All right. Um, and so the very first kosher cask apparently was made by someone who is a, um, a Jewish believer. And um, that is very, very important. And so the, the process from Spain to Israel was done in a manner that the rabbi could certify, yes, this is kosher. And that's the main thing. Um, Kavol in Chicago, um, Robert um, Birnecker, his distillery is, I guess, the first kosher distillery before even m &H distilling happened there in um, Tel Aviv. And so he can have that title if he wants. All right, let's compare the two of these. Um, both of them are 46%. Bravo. Both of these are non-chilled non filtered. And also both of these are natural color, which is very, very nice. So my nose. Red berries, dark chocolate, wood, and a barrel char. Interesting. Honey, malt, yeast. Okay. Two very different whiskeys here. Both of them from Israel. Um, now, for me, every single new distillery basically has a white blank sheet of um, <laughs> for in front of me. Um it's not good. It's not bad. I decide after having a few of their whiskeys, oh, is this a good distillery? Is this going to be less than a good distillery? Now, Ireland is popping, new distilleries are popping up left and right. I've visited quite a few of those, and I've tried many of their whiskeys, and some of them are great, some of them are okay, some of them are need a lot of work. Um, in Germany, we have a lot of distilleries popping up at the moment. Some are great, some are okay, some need a lot of work. And the same thing with other countries around the world. Puni in Italy, um, m &H here in Israel, um, Baines down there's not new, but um, and Tasmanian whiskey. And of course, we have all the different American whiskeys at the moment popping up all over the place. Every state has their own whiskey distillery now. And that's great. I love that. It doesn't have to be old-fashioned. It doesn't have to be traditional. It just has to be well-made whiskey. And m &H actually back then went for great um, equipment, and they got wonderful, wonderful counseling and advisory help with Dr. Jim, the late great Dr. Jim Swan. He was the guy who helped also um, Kavalan in Taiwan, Taiwan to become one of the best distilleries in the world, and it's very interesting. Don't fight the environment was one of his main famous statements. Work with the um, 
the conditions, the weather conditions you have and make the whiskey that your country can make and don't try to make Scottish whiskey in Asia or in Israel or any place else for that matter. It will not work. And so this is a very, very interesting thing. Um, I'm looking for their shave, toasted, and recharred casks from Port to Portugal. Jim Swan had set up the STR casks. They're almost everywhere. Coswold has them. Kings Barn has them. I'm, I think um, Calavalan has a few of them. I have not yet seen them in the M&H. Let's see what happens. All right. So given it some time in the glass, cheers. Wow. So the fruitiness is there, then the alcohol kicks in, and it's hot. It's a little bit more than a, we, in a, in a bourbon country, we say Kentucky hug. This is more than an Israel hug. This is like a punch in the face type of moment. And then that, that, that alcohol dissipates, and then you have that nice, warm, fruity note. Now, I think they're in a little bit of dilemma in Ireland and, and Israel. Um, they have a weather pattern condition environment that is hot and humid. So they're getting not 2 to 4% angel share as typical in Scotland, Ireland. Um, they're getting 10 to 15%. And also the woodiness is really creeping in there. And yet the whiskey has not had enough time really to develop and to become a silky smooth product that they need. Now here it says in the back... Um, says here, palate, um, medium-bodied. I have no idea what medium-bodied means. I'm sorry. Um, not, not a term we use in the whiskey world, a term we, they use in the wine world, but not whiskey. So, um, light, fruity, sherry, sweetness, rich fruit, dark cho chocolate, followed by gentle oak notes. Hmm. I'm not really sure about the word gentle here. So we have the word, the adjective light, we have rich, we have dark, and we have gentle. So um, if we go to the finish, we have long. Uh, the dark chocolate notes linger in the palate for a while, followed by tobacco and oak notes. So a lot of oak in here, yeah? Um, so the aroma, oak, and the palate, oak, and then the finish, oak. So they've realized, even with the tasting notes, the little bit of the dilemma they're in. The problem is, how do you get this whiskey to be something that is more favorable to my palate? I'm not really sure. I think we might have to go to, or they might have to go to, using um, used first fill, second fill, um, virgin, um, second fill um, bourbon casks, and then finishing it only then, after it's been maybe four to six years. I don't know. I'm not the expert yet, but that's something that I'm going to have to work on. Um, I need to pour just a tiny little bit more, and then I'm going to see, show my, share my secret here for this whiskey, and it's water. So the 46% they need because they want to have non-chilled filtering, um, no color added, and so on, and so on. But if you take this down to around 40%, it mitigates a lot of the heat and turns it into a creamy smoothness that is actually here on the back of the box. The barrel char comes out a little bit more. I don't know where that's coming from. It's from the original barrels or from the sherry barrel. Mmm. Mmm. That is a nice whiskey. Unfortunately, 46 is not nice. <laughs> 46 is a little bit brutal in your face. There's still a little bit of that hug, a little bit of alcohol hug towards the back, but it's more of a supporting role. That's an actually an okay whiskey um, if you add the appropriate amount of water. Play with this whiskey. Play with all your whiskeys with a little bit of water and find out what's the best rate. Just because they filled it up, and that does not mean that is the optimal place for that whiskey. Um, look at Talisca. They all have the same ABV because they all taste the best there? No, because that's company policy. Um, and so here, many, many people do 46%, so they don't have the non-chill filtered. And yet, maybe the better um, ABV might be a little bit lower. Unfortunately, you can't al add alcohol and make it higher. I'm sure many of my friends would like to take a Bushmill 16, which is 40%, and put like 8% alcohol back into it. And they're going to go, oh, finally, the whiskey I wanted from Ireland. 
Um, but this is not the case. I'm going to give this a solid C. Without without water, it's a C minus. Going on a D, um, but it's a C with water. A value for money, sixty five euros. Ah, C minus. Um, going tending uh, C minus minus D plus plus. That's a lot of money for a no age statement. This is three to four years old. Um, yes, it's kosher. Yes, it's, yes, it's the first kosher uh, sherry barrels from um, Jerez there in Spain. But yet, does that justify that price, 65 euros? I can get a lot of really good whiskey. I can get a Craig Anarchy 17 for that price over here and um, on sale over here in Germany. I would much rather have a 17-year-old Craig Anarchy than this. But that's the price we're talking about. If we go over here to the classic... The number one um, tasting note you get is honey. And there's a lot of honey with alcohol added. Hmm. Honey, maltiness, alcohol. Um, expect good things from m and Expect um, them to develop. Expect them to have a great um, worldwide distribution network. And expect them to actually um, get better with age. Now, my question of the day, and I have not mentioned this yet, but this is something I really like. If you take a look at this bottle here, they've done an excellent job here with the branding. Look at that line. Just goes right through there. They didn't make it happen here. But still, you have the line and you have the nice little thing here. I like the box, by the way. Great box. Bottle's a little bit overcrowded, a little bit loud. Uh, the glossy type of red on here was not necessary and so on. But my question of the day is, everyone knows about the Glen, I'm not the Glen, Johnny Walker slanted label that goes in the other direction. What other whiskeys do you know that have a slanted label? I haven't found very many at all, but maybe you can notice or write down one or two here in the comments. Thank you very much. Wonderful whiskey from Israel. Looking forward to trying more of this. Make sure you get it at the right place where your, your palate enjoys it. And looking forward to uh, what we'll see in the future. Whiskey Jason here. Whiskey from the viewpoint of an American in Germany tasting rare and exotic whiskeys. Hope to see you soon. Bye-bye.